Hey, in this video, let's go through a JavaScript interview question about the this keyword. All right, so here's our JavaScript interview question. We have this variable vehicle, which is set to an object, it has a couple properties, type and log info. Log info is a method which does a few things. It has this var this equals this, does a couple console.logs, and it has this function over here which does similar console.logs. Of course, vehicle.log info is called, and the question is, what is the output? Now, this is definitely one of those questions where you look at it, your gut reaction to what the answer will be probably isn't gonna be the actual answer. So you start to wonder, are you at the interview to learn about the company and explore an exciting opportunity, or are you there so your interviewer can watch you trip up? Nonetheless, let's tackle the question. There's a lot of good lessons to learn here about how the this object works in JavaScript. Now, feel free to watch the video without coding along, but I'm gonna assume that you're coding along in your own instance of Replit. It's also the reason why the pronouns I'm gonna use aren't I'm, I'll, and me, but rather we'll, let's, and us. All right, for starters, I'm gonna comment out this whole chunk of code, and let's start with a smaller example. For this smaller example, let's set up an object that represents a bender, as in Avatar, the last airbender. So this object is gonna be called Ang. For this Ang object, let's start out with one property element, which represents the element type for Ang, and in this case, Ang has the element air. A second property is going to be greet, and this one is going to be a method. And in this method, let's do a console.log. For the console.log, how about a string, hi, I'm Aang, and notice that I used double quotes, so that way the single quote for I'm could be used. And then how about I can do cool things with, and then this line is rather long, so let me expand this a bit and as a second argument, this dot element. So the result should be, hi, I'm Aang, I can do cool things with air. So here's that this keyword. The this keyword becomes available in a function when you attach it as a member of an object. So the fact that greet is a member of the object means that the this keyword becomes available and it gets set to a representation of the owner object itself, which is why this dot element should become air. All right, let's go ahead and log ang, or rather call ang.greet on the last line of the REPL. And once you have all of that, go ahead and execute the entire REPL, and you'll see, hi, I'm ang. I can do cool things with air. Nice. Now, let me reemphasize the fact that you have to use a function expression in order for this to work. For example, if you change this to an arrow function, and then you run the REPL once more, and by the way, command enter executes the REPL. You get hi, I'm Aang. I can do cool things with undefined. Now, narratively speaking, this actually kind of makes sense. Aang is the avatar, so his abilities with the elements are boundless, definitionless. You could say undefined. Now, I digress. The point is, if you use an arrow function, it's not going to work. You have to use a function expression if you want the this object to represent the owner object itself. Now running this returns back to the normal, I can do cool things with air. Next, let's add a little of the complexity we saw at the beginning with the original question and add that function that appears right in the middle of the method. So remember at the beginning, there was a function in the middle of the method that was called. In this function, let's do a console.log as well. And for the console.log, the first argument, it's gonna be a string. I can make a ball with. The second argument is gonna be this dot element, cool. So the result should hopefully be I can make a ball with air. Now, notice that this function is nameless. Therefore, it's an anonymous. The function itself is not set to an object, nor was it declared as a function with a name. Now, just because the function is anonymous doesn't mean it can't be called. To call the function, use a pair of parentheses after the closing curly brace for the body of the function. 
Now go ahead and run this, and what you should find is a syntax error, unexpected token on line 27, which is the start of the anonymous function. You'll also find that the column number is 12. If you count 12 characters over, you're gonna see that it's the opening parentheses for the function. So JavaScript is expecting that you're creating a function declaration over here. Now, if you actually declare the function with a name, you're gonna find that the syntax error moves on to a new line. It's now line 32, column number six, which is this opening parentheses. Now this time, the reason is that JavaScript can't distinguish the body for this function from a regular block of code also created with a pair of curly braces. So it thinks that this pair of curly braces is a block of code, and then it's random to have a pair of parentheses right after. Now, in order to make the proper distinguishment, what you can do is you can wrap the entire function with a pair of parentheses. Now, when you run that, you get the log of hi amang. I can do cool things with air, and I can make a ball with undefined. Now, we'll get to that undefined bit in just a moment. Notice though that you can still create this as an anonymous function as long as you have the wrapping parentheses around the entire function body. So when you run this, you get the same log. I can make a ball with undefined. Now, why is that undefined? It's certainly working with that first log of hi amang. I can do cool things with air, but this time it's I can make a ball with undefined. Now to dig into this, let's add a console.log that first logs the this object as a string, and then the this object itself within that function. If you run this, you're gonna see something interesting. It's a security error blocked a frame with origin from accessing across origin frame. Now, the reason we added this log is that we want to dig into what the this object is within this function. Now, this security error is giving a hint. Here, the this object is the global this object. So Replit is blocking you from accessing it for a good reason. You could definitely do hacky things by modifying that this object within their web application. So in order to dig into this, let's actually copy this whole chunk of code into the clipboard and then go ahead and open up your browser console by inspecting the element on the browser. Once you're ready, go ahead and paste in the chunk of code within the console and then call ang.greet. That way we can see those logs. And this time you see that this object is the global window object with all these inner methods. Now, if you enter the this object itself within the console over here, you're gonna see that indeed this represents the window object that was logged from that custom console.log this within that anonymous inner function. So the finding is that this anonymous function doesn't resolve its this object to the owner ang object, which reveals something important about how these methods and the this object work. In order for the this object to resolve to the owner object, it not only has to be a function expression, it has to be a member of the object itself. So knowing this, we can fix the fact that this anonymous inner function doesn't have access to the this object, or rather that it's not bound to the owner ang object itself. What we gotta do is bind this function as a method on the ang object. So for now, go ahead and copy this function to your clipboard, then go ahead and comment it out as a reference. Then after the ang object, attach a new method to ang called boast and set it to that function itself. Now get rid of those closing parentheses, or rather wrapping parentheses, and the extra pair parentheses after the closing curly brace and make sure the alignment looks good. Now preserve both of those console.logs, and now after ang.greet, go ahead and call ang.boast. Now when you run this, this time you see I can make a ball with air, and that this object represents the ang object itself, which has the element, greet, and boast properties. So that's how the this object works. It's not only important to use a function expression, but it's also important to attach it as a member of the object itself. Now, knowing this, I think we have enough context to move on to that original question. Go ahead and highlight all the new code we just added and comment it out as a reference for notes. 
and then go back up to the commented out code for that original question, and then go ahead and uncomment it back. So here we have that question again, which sets up the vehicle object. It has that log info method, which sets this to this and does some console.logs. And it's our job to figure out what the output is of vehicle.log info. All right, so let's figure this out by starting from the top of the log info method and going down. The first line is this var this equals this line. So this creates a variable reference to the original this object as it exists currently within log info. Now, since log info is both a function expression and a member of vehicle, this this object is going to represent that owner vehicle object itself, which means that both of these next two console.logs for this.type should be sedan. So for the output, we can make a note that we first expect sedan and then sedan. In addition, there's also going to be those labels of one this.type and one capital this.type, but those are negligible. The important part is that both sedan and sedan get logged in these console.logs. Okay, now we have that anonymous inner function, which is the syntax we explored earlier. First, it does a console.log of this.type in lowercase. Now, this is probably the most tricky part of the question because we saw that the anonymous inner function doesn't actually create a this object that is bound to the owner object. Even though it happens to be a function that is within a method itself, it has to be a method of the object in order for that this representation to change. So this dot type is gonna be that global window object, or more accurately speaking within Replit, it's that global object which was blocked for security reasons, which means this dot type should be undefined because this dot type hasn't been set yet. Just like this dot element was undefined for Aang in the global object. So the next line to output should be undefined. All right, now we get to the final log, which again is that capital this dot type. Now this hasn't changed in between getting to this log and the logs that came before, which means that capital this is still a representation of that original this object, which means this dot type in the capital form should still be sedan. And now we've made it to the end of the console.logs. So the output we're expecting is sedan, sedan, undefined, and sedan. All right, so moment of truth, Let's go ahead and run the REPL. And indeed, it's sedan, sedan, undefined, and sedan. Awesome. So I hope this has helped show you some important things about how the this object works in JavaScript. And if anything, if you get this tricky question in a JavaScript interview, well, you're gonna kill it. Now I've prepared and made a lot of interview question videos like this. So if you enjoyed the style and format, be sure to watch the next ones that are coming up. All right, see you in the next one.